I'm joined by Enda Varley to talk about the All-Ireland final Mayo against Dublin. Enda, how many goals do Mayo need here to make even a game of it? <laughs> uh, ten. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Christ. Um, I know, joking aside though, like, are you going into this thinking Mayo have a right shot here? I'm cautiously optimistic, we'll put it like that. It's, um, you know, the bookies have Dublin minus four for a reason. The last few months, obviously, the, the games they've had, they've looked very, uh, very good in terms of the hammerings they've given out. Um, you know, Mayo, you know, I'm not going to say they're in transition, but they're, you know, they're bringing in a, a good few new players. So it's it's a bit of the unknown come, come Saturday here now because we're not exactly sure where we're at at the moment. Mm. Do, do you think that these young lads that have come in like Owen McLaughlin, Oshin Mullen, Ryan O'Donoghue, um, Tommy Conroy, have they all hit the ground running to be up at that All-Ireland final level? Again, shit, like, again, it's so hard because this championship is a bit weird, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, against Goy, didn't have a game. Obviously, tip the last day, it was it was a bit of a, you know, after 20 minutes, let's be honest, it was, it was over. So, again, Dublin are the, are the benchmark, and on Saturday, we'll tell a, tell a tale. Like, I know James, James will be telling them, like, they're going to gonna they're gonna press high against them. They, they have serious athletes. Mayo, definitely, the last 10 years, we produce some seriously good athletes. Uh, and this is no different with the, the lads that have come in that have replaced the likes of Zippy, Colum, Shane O'Shea, Tom Parsons. Like it's it's hard to replace them boys. But then boy, the guys that have come in, look at the early signs are they're you know, they're they're very, very good and they have a bright future ahead of them. But again, Saturday is gonna be the benchmark where where we're at, uh, where they're at as a squad and you know, in terms of in terms of coaching wise or in terms of smarts of the game, you know, Dublin Dublin are together five years to transition themselves nicely, nice and slow, bringing one or two players in all the time. But like um, to me, Dublin would be would be slight. Obviously, uh, I'm not even going slightly ahead. They're definitely ahead in terms of where they're at as a, as a squad and and the players. Also, the players they can bring in uh, the next day off the bench, which is which is huge. They've, mm-hmm. they've actually addressed that problem in in recent years. Yeah. Uh, in terms in 18, 19, I don't think they were strong, but they're. They're, uh, they're coming again, I'm afraid. When you reflect on the Mayo's win over Tipperary, like it was obviously very comprehensive, 5 20 to yeah. 3 13. Do you, do you come away from that thinking about all the positives of putting up that scoreline and killing up Connor getting 4 9, or do you think Tip could have arguably scored 10 goals if, if every. Well, easy that's look at it's It's double double inside the coin there, Shane. Like, obviously. Positives away from the Tipperary game is their score uh, ratio, conversion ratio went up. The only the first wide after sixty minutes, um, or the high press, the the dispossessed tip were a tip coming out of defence, and they got their goal chances out of that as well. Um, so this, but again, as you said there, it was like the Red Sea opening up. Uh, you know, go down the middle of the Mayo defence. You know, Dublin will will punish you for that. So. You know that's that's the big question coming in on Saturday now. Can Mayo show up that defence? Because if they don't, this won't be a game after half time, uh, because Dublin are clinical and they will take those chances. Um, the, the other thing as well, like against Tipperary, I was very impressed with the high press with Mayo, um, and Dublin. It'll, it'll be interesting because I know what James is saying now to them th- this week. He's saying, um, you know, press high with the kick out. Um, try and suffocate them like they did against Kerry in 2019 in the league final they absolutely suffocated Kerry in that second half but with that Shane comes dangers at the back as in if they break that rear guard then you're very exposed at the back as I said against like Tipperary Chrissy and Oshie Mullen sometimes were on an island back there mm-hmm. and as we know you know 2012 uh, Michael Murphy was on an island himself against us in 2012 and he punished us for, for you know, punished us in the, on that occasion, the first ten minutes, and you know, we, I hope as a squad or as a team, they've they've learned that you know, um, I don't know, try and get back in front of the D and protect that full back line as best they can. Because mm, like, you know, when we're talking about Mayo having transition, and we've gone through all those young players coming through, and they're all impressive. Like you could say that Dublin are transitioning just as yeah. much. But like Niall Scully's been there a couple of years, but like Sean Butler, Robbie McDaid. Even the full back yeah. line, like two thirds of David Burns been there a couple of years and Owen Merchant. But at, like yeah. even Paddy Small coming in. So it's not like they're not changing around as well. So 
Is there any reason that those guys should be transitioning any quicker than Mayo's players? Yeah, but uh, well, they're coming off five in a row team, so yeah. the culture they'll, they'll drop. Obviously, Mayo have a massive uh, culture as well, but uh, you know, five in a row, you know, they're, they're they're dipping lads. It's like Mayo have introduced eight new lads this year. They had eight new debutants this year against Leitrim. That to me is a total transition. That's you know, that's what a third year squad, whatever you want to say. Like Dublin, are, you know, they're bringing in lads and like one or two they might dip one or two in uh, every year but as you said there Daley Byrne's been there a good few years Old Merchant's been there a good few years Robin McDade uh, granted this is his debut debut season and he's done very well but um, you know Mayo uh, these boys are literally just in the squad maybe 12 months and they're on the biggest stage so that's the transition is, is a lot quicker for the Mayo for Mayo boys than it is for Dublin I feel uh, the, what, like and you're saying about the transition we say to me on Saturday the big thing is with, with Jack McCaffrey like Jack McCaffrey's obviously gone Jim is obviously gone that experience is invaluable so it'd be interesting with that high press like Dublin don't have that you know that raw pace as in a Jack McCaffrey anymore do you know what I mean as mm. in the, the, uh, McCaffrey was like an X factor if you know what I mean like if, if you're ever in trouble Give it to him, and he'd break the line every time. Yeah, I once don't or see twice a game. That. Yeah, once or twice a game, he would always have done that. But now maybe it's happening further up the field with like Con or Kieran Kilkenny, who seems to have hit a new level. So they still have guys who break the lines, and Brian Fenton as well, of course. Yeah, hundred percent. It'd be interesting, even with that now, with the kick out on Saturday, will Cluxton, you know, how what kind of distance is he going to go? Is he going to just go short, or you know, to me, Dublin probably have the aerial advantage with fields. So will he kind of capitalize on that and go a bit longer and get that get that ball get their the team's position up higher up the pitch so Mayo is high press they won't have to go through the whole Mayo team that's another interesting factor on, on Saturday and be be good to see mm. and do you like the idea of that high press like it, is is it worth it because like I don't think Cluxton can go as long as the likes of Rory Began who could potentially kick it to the far sixty five. So, like, do you gamble and then, like, if you lose it, just try and get everyone back as quick as possible? Or is that naive? You're saying, how do you mean? As in, you're saying for Cluxton to go as long as he can, is it? No, well, I'm talking about Mayo because they probably know that Cluxton can't kick. Let's say he went with four up front, then four and, yeah. and four yeah. or something like that. And even a couple more yeah. pushed up again. Like, Cluxton yeah. can't kick over everybody. So, if you really go yeah. tight, like, is it naive talk from somebody who probably has, ne well, has never played football at that level to suggest doing something like that? No, and they will do that. Dublin, and Mayo, don't get me wrong. Dublin and Mayo will press that kick out as hard as they can because obviously the score ratio, the score conversion ratio, Shane goes up dramatically if you can turn over that kick out because you're up the pitch higher, obviously, and you're bearing down straight on goal. So the two, the, like Dublin, would be looking at Clarkey's kick out as well, and they'd be thinking, right, we can make hay here, and we, we'll, we're going to press. They go for, as you said, there four in the full forward line, four in the half forward line, and then they'll, they'll bring three or even four across. They go eleven. Uh, and, They'll, go, they'll push a wing back up into midfield and they'll go 11 across in their own in Mayo's half to try and press Clarke as much as they can and you know and Mayo will, will probably do the same thing so it'll be interesting it'll be interesting the next day what the goalies do if you know what I mean um, who can get that ball out as quickly as possible and you know a big big factor on Saturday will be who, who can retain their kick out and you know retain possession because it's like an offensive play now at this stage is an attack and play that's what they they call it anymore like imagine imagine saying now 20 like that's what they're calling it anymore it's an offensive play and they're trying to retain their position possession at all times to to create that attack Do, like if you take last year's game out of it um the dublin mayo games have been very very close over the last decade and yeah. even last year was it something like mayo had played seven times in eight weeks and you'd had Dermot O'Connor only coming back from injury. I think Matty Rowan had had an injury as well. So I think last year's was a bit of an outlier, wasn't it? I don't think that necessarily means that this is, we're heading for a beat down here. Yeah, no, like, and I think, like, James, James, to be honest, he probably gave the, the lads last year their last kind of chance in terms of could they bridge that gap. And he, he, he fell between two stools, as in, like, uh, he tried to go kind of more of last year and he's a more kind of 
you know, more of a risk taker. So I, he, he won't want to uh, fall between two stools here now on Saturday. He, I, he's going to be telling them boys to try and suffocate them. And Dublin, they haven't really had any test, and that inten- he's going to bring ferocious intensity to to the game on Saturday, and we'll see how Dublin react to it. And that's why I was saying about Jack McCaffrey. That's their kind of X factor. That's their get out of jail card because no one can touch him for pace he'd break that line even if he's in that half back line if you want Dublin to break that line he's their man to do it and I don't think any of the boys like Merchant has good jets on him uh, McDade but they still wouldn't be able to uh, touch uh, McCaffrey in, in that mm-hmm. line so like Horn is like, Horn is very like tunnel vision when it, when it comes to this his message to the players he doesn't want to you know give them any out as in you press that ball and you make sure they don't get out on, on Saturday and see how, how they react to that but with that as well if they do if Dublin do break that rear guard then we're in trouble at the back as you could see against Tipperary so like Mayo had a fro- they had a high press against Tipperary and we st- we conceded seven goal chances that's a big worry when you go back to last year's game at Croke Park the thing that stood out to me was when Dublin carried the ball up to let's say the Mayo 45 they were able to find ways to burst through like Jack McCaffrey yeah. Cabo, like Fenton they were able to quite easily put you on the back foot going into 45, whereas I find, found when you were carrying up, and I remember Shamey O'Shea a couple of times, obviously been a very, very yeah. good player, but like he struggled to actually find ways to break through. I think Stephen Cohen a couple of times as well. That was the problem. You were yeah. getting turned back at the 45. Like You have added Owen McLaughlin, and you do have Dirk, and, and there's a couple other great runners there, Lee Keegan, of course, as well. Do you have enough to actually be able to punch through their line? Um, well, last year, I think, uh, as I said, see, uh, James went uh, with a more defensive structure. He had more kind of uh, Johnny Vaughan started wing forwards, Jeremy O'Connor started like Matt Duran. We had we had four or five midfielders on the pitch at that stage, and we really only had Andy Moore didn't start, Darren Cohen didn't start. Killing was only really our main um, score getter. So James is going to flip that this year, and he's going to go for it. Um, so it's again, you're saying. Dublin, Dublin are very good. The last five years, they've they, see Dublin are other teams have tried to shut Dublin down with the blanket defence. So Jim obviously said to them, as we've discussed this various times before, that's a training ground move where they move the ball from one side of the pitch to the other. It's a collective, um, uh, what you call it. They, they move it as a team. They know exactly where people are going to be. So as I said to you before, if Finton's on the other side of the pitch, he's going to wait. He's not going to go over to that corner. He knows it's going to be recycled around. And you know, it's like they're coming in twos and threes in from the other side and they're creating that channel and they're creating space around that D. And they've done that over and over again. And it's it's just second nature to them now at this stage. So you know, people try to play the defang- blanket defence with them. They had to try and counteract that. And that's been a lot of the train, uh, coaching sessions and training sessions and the basketball coaches coming in. That's what they've been teach- teaching them. And that's, you know, they're weeping the rewards now because you know, people don't know what to do with them at this stage. Mm. And do you, what sort of a game do you want Mayo to play here? Is it a, sort of a chaos one where it is that high press and it is, it's a bit more kind well, of... Yeah, I want basically... The, the boys are going to be like I mean they're going to be putting up serious serious mileage now on Saturday in terms of yeah I've no look at I understand what James is trying to do with the high press but you know if it's a thing if I'm a corner, corner forward and I'm just going in for the sake of going in and you know the cornerback we say whoever it is uh, uh, Simon is just fists over my head and I'm out of the game straight away like there has to be some sort of a bit of cop on from the Mayo you know forwards to say right I can't get out of the game here. You know, I'm always stay stay in the game and see what happens. Um, you know, uh, yeah, if you have to retreat to 45, retreat to 45 and, and press there uh, as a unit. But, you know, and that also condenses the pitch as well. So Stephen Cohen can push one back. Like, I, I'm just afraid, you know, James is all about the high press, but, you know, he's even that full back line very, very ex- exposed. And he's saying, look, at trust your one-on-one matchups. But that's fair enough. But 70, 75 minutes of football, it's very hard for the likes of them boys one-on-one at that, you know, for 75 minutes to not concede goal chances. And that's been Mayo's Achilles heels for the last 10 years, being brutally honest with you. Mm-hmm. And like, like, we, we've had we, we've had some serious, serious defenders out. Like Zippy, uh, like Jura Calf and his pomp is, it was a serious defender. Um, Colin Boyle, Leroy, like they, they're up with the best. So, but with that, if the ball is coming in, if the if the boys have a bit of time on the ball out the field, it's very, very hard to mark that, Shane. Like, so mm-hmm. it's 
it's just I just I I'm hoping to see a plus one someone trying to get back from that weak side and cut off that that ball uh, around the D. That's what I'm hoping for. So when you've been playing with St. Vincent's, you've come up against Castle Knock and Kieran Kilkenny. Would I, yeah. I, I don't know? Have you played against him many times? Would like what sort of plan do you have for a guy like that? And maybe he's playing a bit closer to goal now with Dublin than he has been with Castle Knock. Yeah. Um... He look at Kieran. Obviously, he's he's one of their leaders. You can you can know he's he's obviously very well respected within the squad, and they look to him to you know if they're in trouble, if the game is becoming ragged, it's it's himself, Finton, uh, Cluxton. They're the kind of three boys that you know as a, as a trio they kind of set the tone as if they feel the game's going ragged here, right? As you can see, numerous times they put the hand up and they'll they'll slow it down. Like against Cavan, the game was a bit ragged for the first ten minutes. And they they literally you know it was counter attack football and they're like no this is this is not you know this is not where what we're at here so they literally slowed the game down from ninety seconds two minutes and they they literally switched the ball uh, from one side of the pitch to the other got the got their two men wide touching the sideline and they created those channels and Kieran Kilkenny went in for a goal chance which was deflected over the bar that's the to me that's the difference in in terms of you know that team that maturity that they show now. And that's that comes from a, a squad being together for that length of time. Mm. Do you, do you think Sean Bugler and Niall Scully they play a very different role than let's say when Dermot Connolly and Paul Flynn were wing forwards and they were sort of swashbuckling, take on your score. Yeah, they're almost like minders yeah. a bit further back, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they won't be as kind of kind of flamboyant if, if you want to kind of mm. go go that with that, but. You know they, they obviously do do their job for the team. They, they have serious serious engines. They they get through a seri- they, they get through a serious amount of, of mileage throughout the game. And they they obviously they're very good at obviously a transition from defense into attack. And you can say look at their half hours now half backs they're very much interchangeable. So if Scully or Bul, 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 Bulger is Bulger 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 Bugler. Bu- Bugler. Bugler. Uh, if them two boys see the likes of Merchant or McDade getting ahead of them, well, they they have the cop on to kind of you know mind the house as well, and they, they sit back, and you know it's they're kind of interchangeable, as you said there, Flynn and and Jeremy was on ob- were obviously you know score getters and you know all the skills you want, but Dublin's game has kind of changed now. They're much more uh, precise in their approach, as in they're not they're they're not as loose in terms of just firing in ball into the full forward line. 40, 50 yard balls. You rarely see Dublin kick the ball more than 30, 40 yards, mm. being honest, do you? Mm. So it's, you know, they're very precise in their approach. They don't want to get uh, turned over. They don't want counter attacks. And also, I heard people saying about Kevin and they look kind of odd. Dublin's fitness levels were way ahead of Kevin's the last day. And I'm just thinking, lads, like when you keep the ball for that length of time and Kevin lads are running around the pitch after that, it's going to be energy sapping stuff here. So, you know, Dublin obviously. They, they look fitter because, as we know, keeping the ball, even in hurling as well, you know, your mindset is your energy levels are completely different, you know, trying to hunt that ball down and try and uh, turn it over. So, you know, the, Dublin don't give teams the chance, as in against Kevin, they looked always in control, uh, you know, bringing the ball around, you know, keeping that, you know, making sure it's a 60 40 ball uh, for their players at all times. So, again, I want like Mayo will bring that chaos to them. They'll bring that intensity, and it's it's whether how how Dublin can react to that because they haven't been tested this year, and that's probably that's Desi's biggest fear here, that he's not sure what kind of chaos and what kind of uh, intensity Mayo will bring to the fold. So they're definitely conscious over that from mm-hmm. previous years. And my concern then is if you do play or chaos, it means that there'll probably be more negative turnovers, which means handing it back to Dublin, who won't give it back to you easy. So it's, if you're not used to playing patiently and holding on to it for two minutes, I, that uh, like that's a real conundrum. Yeah, well, I'm like I'm saying in chaos in terms of when when Mayo don't have the ball, they're yeah. hunting in packs like. But when they do have the ball, obviously, saying they have to be. You know they have to be very precise in in their attack. Like it's, it has to be a 60-40 ball. Yeah, you, you have to. They're they they'll definitely be a lot more mindful. They won't be any kind of loose kicking. As in they'll try and get get to the scoring zone and take as many chances as they can. Each attack each attack against Dublin is 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 very very important. So they'll they'll definitely be mindful of that and and also putting the ball. I know we were saying about 
against Tipperary, they had only one wide uh, against them uh, until the 60th minute. But they had three three into the goalie's hands, and that's that against Dublin. That's a counter attack straight away, and that's that's trouble. That that's trouble straight away. All three of them were Paddy Durkin actually early on in the game because I remember yeah, thinking at the time, yeah. you know. But yeah. like he is a player who can burst through. Uh, what about the uh, the full forward line? How do Tommy Conroy, who's really impressed, Aidan O'Shea, who yeah. I don't think he's scored against Dublin in the Championship, but certainly not in the All-Ireland Final, and Killian O'Connor, yeah. like, scoring 4-9 against Tipperary is obviously very different to playing against <laughs> against Dublin. Like, so, <laughs> how do they get those like, people? Even, even, even to physically score 4-9, it's difficult. Do you know what I mean? Oh, should be tired kicking the ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's unreal. Yeah. Um, and that's, look at it, again... That's what I'm saying. James will definitely be more, more, um, you know, more attack-minded uh, this game. Tommy Conroy has been a great find in terms of, you know, Killian has been probably best form since I've seen him back since 2014 when he last won his All Star. He looks so so sharp. Um, you know, a lot of people kind of give him grief about, oh, he's just a free taker. He's not a top top forward, which is. Which is kind of insane, to be honest. Like the, you know, in terms of people taking for granted, you know, free takers anymore. Himself and Dean Work are just, are just unbelievable at this stage. Like, and Edo, Edo play, you know, Edo has a massive role to play, and I have a feeling Philly, Philly will probably go in on him. He got twenty minutes against against uh, Cavan the last day, and, and Desi will be mindful of that. But like, you know, I think it's Dave Goldrick who's referee. The like, like Philly, like Philly's five foot ten and he's fourteen stone. Like Edo's six foot five. And he's sixteen and a half stone. So there's no way like Philly the referee has to be mindful. Like Philly absolutely pulls the shit into the know, Just because a guy's kind of six foot five and he can take it doesn't mean it's not a free like. So it'll be you know, Dublin are mindful Rado in full forward and he's a big role to play because you know, he he'll take two to mind him. Like Dublin will have will have Johnny Cooper or will try and get John Small back in front of him. Well, like with that, then if he's taken one out from the one away from out the pitch, when Mayo runner is in, they have a plus one to come attacking down through them channels, and you know just because Edo's inside doesn't mean you have to kick it into him all the time. So it should be creating, you know, um, a decoy, basically. creating an extra. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a decoy is right. Yeah. So if if they get if Mayo get joy from joy from the running game, well then. You know, John Small or Johnny Cooper, who is the plus one attack, will have to push out, and then Edo can, you know, he can launch a few balls into Edo. So it's a, you know, it's, it'd be an interesting tactic if Edo can get on top. Which you know, Edo, I know, I know, obviously, like you know, he be he be dying to get out on Saturday. Like he, he, you know, if you put a challenge to Edo, like he, he, he kind of. It thrives on it, so you know James will be challenging Nato this this week to to really put his stamp on the game, and you know he's he's a massive role to play if he can get that ball, if he can win that possession in around the full forward line and get get the runners off him. That's that's chaos in the Dublin defence, and they certainly don't want that. And do you see one of Davy Byrne or Owen Merchant getting dropped for Philly McMahon to start? He came on and did well on Gallagher last day. Yeah, I. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It'd be very harsh, probably, on Davy Byrne, uh, the current fullback. But h- horses for courses, and you know, Jim had no problem dropping. Uh, you know, Philly was always the kind of man to to go on to Edo. But again, it'll be interesting what David the David Goldrick does here because you know the first few fouls like Philly, and Philly Philly's very good at this as well. Like he, whenever Philly's in trouble, like he, he goes up the pitch. He he wanders up the pitch like. And try and you know put it put put his his marker on the back foot like, but then from from Mayo's perspective like they can't be letting him dictate that if if Edo he, he's going to have to get one of his wing forwards to track him and make sure Philly knows that because Philly's just trying to get you up the pitch with them to you know to basically sap your energy and to basically he's dictating from corner back what you're you know you're running after him it should be the other way around like so Mayo have to be cute enough. If Philly is wandering up the pitch to get one of the wing forwards to track him and make sure Philly knows that. And Philly be looking around thinking, is Edo following me here? If he is, great. If he's not, oh shit, I, I better, I'm only going to go halfway here and I'm going to go back again. Have you marked Philly it's, McMahon? I have, yeah. And he's, yeah. And he's, he's done similar. He, he did very, something very similar to me. Um, recently and we just basically got our wing forwards it's not a selfish thing Shane from my perspective but like once once the wing forward forward tracks them for a couple of runs 
he doesn't move again because he knows himself. He's just trying to dictate, and he's 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 being smart, like. But you, as a collective unit, as a team, you know, your teammate have to has to realize that too and help you out. And after the couple, first couple of runs, he won't he won't go again. Because then you'll be worn out if you're running up and down, and like you're supposed ah, to be yeah. close to goal to score, you need the energy up there. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, and that I, I remember a situation back in. 2010, it was in the championship debut, actually. Mayo, we played Sligo, and uh, Charlie Harrison, I'm not messing, he must have went up the pitch from cornerback 15 times. And I'm kind of thinking, as as a wee pop, like, I was thinking, how in God's name am I? You know, this, this I've never experienced that. And no one kind of, you know, as a team, like, I didn't know at the time, obviously, experience and all that. The wing forward, if I just told my wing forward, whoever was in the day, just pick him and let him hear you physically say it. You pick Phil, or whoever is Philly up when he goes past you. Let Philly hear that, and Philly won't be going anymore. Right, okay. And then, um, do you think Matty Ryan will go on Brian Fenton? And try uh, and try just Matty Ryan will go on Brian Fenton. I think, I think probably Jim O'Connor, the talk is Jim O'Connor might take him up. Like, you have Matty, like McCarthy as well, obviously. Look, Fenton's the form player at the moment. Mayo will be targeting him to try and shut him down because he's he's obviously a key key player for them. So it'll be you know I'd imagine Jeremy would probably go on Finton. He, he has the legs for him for sure. Jeremy is himself and Stephen Cohen would be the two fitters on the on the Mayo squad, um, and Matthew would probably possibly take up James McCarthy then as well. Mm. Um, so you know <laughs> middle third Shane is is key. I don't know, they'll probably mix in Edo in and out from the full forward line, see how they're getting on. Um, but like that that midfield battle is is huge and that kick out is huge come Saturday. Yeah, not to mention the bench has Brian Howard being brought off the bench the last day. And yeah, like, and, and that's, off on the that's, bench? Uh, yeah, that, and that's, I was kind of looking through that now the last few days, the, the guys at Dublin brought on, like obviously Philly came on, um, uh, Mannion came on for Paddy Small, Paul like McCoslo. Basquell came on. Yeah, Cormac Costello. That's that's huge firepower. Them three boys is better than any other county team in the country. Paul Mannion. Paul Mannion, for God's sake. Like, you know, Jesus. We played Crokes this year in the championship and Mannion looked he looked he looked sharp, like, do you know what I mean? So I know Paddy Small obviously, uh Paddy Moore won the championship, but they them two players are very, very similar. And you know, if 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 Paddy Small gets 50, 50 minutes, and then you're bringing in Mannion uh, for the last twenty five minutes, you're kind of thinking whoever it is if it's Chrissy Barrett or whoever it is on him, you're kind of thinking Jesus Christ, I have seventy five minutes of hardship here. Yeah, yeah. And is, can you make a case for Mayo winning this one? Because like it must be a tough game to preview because everyone in the country is expecting Dublin to win and probably at arm's length. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 a bit like it's a free shot for Mayo this year. To be quite honest with you, no, is it even, like, even a Mayo? When there's uh, all the misery well, in the finals, you're like, when will it ever end? Like, I know that, yeah, but like the bookies have them at minus four for a reason, like, um, and again, like Mayo, are, well, with that, you're saying the misery in the finals because <laughs> with that, Mayo people are very like very cautious to get their hopes up, yeah. so they're not gonna like you know they, they've seen the evidence this, this year. They've seen obviously what tip you know got their seven goal chances against against us the last day. So, you know, look at there's always there's always hope. It's a two horse race, and Mayo have have you know brought Dublin to 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 one one score a game in previous finals. So there's always that hope that that Mayo will will do that again. But as I was saying to you, it's it's obviously a new a new team uh, with new individuals. So. We we can until Saturday we, we we won't really know what we're getting yet to be quite honest with you. Okay, brilliant stuff, Enda. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Shane. Cheers, mate.